glyphosate. In all honesty, this was a pretty profound study in reference to the epigenetic damage that could be occurring in our population due to consumption of glyphosate. I really didn't even want to do this article. But, however though, because I thought it was so profound and the impact was so dramatic across generations that it would at least made a mention in any of the major media outlets. It did not. So, that is why we're here, covering the research as follows for our great small select group of viewers. Proceed as follows. Glyphosate can create biomarkers predicting disease in future generations. Now, this was an animal model or an animal study. Why was it not conducted in humans? Let's hear best from a quote from the researcher. Right now, quote, it is very difficult to find a population that's not exposed to glyphosate to have a control group for comparison. Why? For those not familiar, glyphosate is widely used in agriculture and common in the human food supply. Previous research has indicated that the chemical has limited toxicology for those that ingest it since it has a short half-life and breaks down in the body quickly. Quoting the research. However, Skinner's research and other animal studies have provided evidence that health effects from glyphosate and other chemicals could be inherited by subsequent generations. Now, the outcome. Exposure to the widely used weed killer glyphosate makes genetic changes to rats. Why? Because you can't find humans for control. That can be linked to increased disease in their great or their grandchildren and great grandchildren. Think of it this way. All right, so you're the, the generation that's consuming tons of glyphosate. And, of course, you'll hear debates of whether it's toxicology or toxic, whatever. I even read a WebMD. They said the experts said it's table salt was more dangerous. Just to give you perspective of some of the ideas out there referenced to glyphosate. So your generation zero, and you'll see this in the data, F0 is what they'll have here. You may not notice anything right off the bat if you're one of the fortunate ones to to tolerate glyphosate that well. But then think of it like you're orienteering and you have a compass and the deviation on the compass is off one degree. The next generation, maybe something. The second, third, fourth generations. Now the damage as you begin to deviate from that pathway on the compass, the damage begins to multiply. It has a cascade effect. So keep that in mind to proceed as follows. All right, can be inherited by subsequent generations. Quote, the study provides evidence that glyphosate induced changes to sperm from exposed rats that can be used as biomarkers. They're going to be doing female studies as well. So keep that in mind. For determining propensity in subsequent generations for prostate and kidney diseases as well as obesity and incurring multiple diseases at once. Now, keep in mind, part of the reason the study was conducted as well was not just to say, hey, we are going to have epigenetic damage in reference to glyphosate. Part of the reason was also, too, the determining those biomarkers which can detect an individual that leaves propensity, as stated here, for future disease. So you go into your medical practitioner's office, they run a blood test, they go, wow, you have this much glyphosate in your system, you have about an 80% chance of, of being prone or succumbing to kidney disease, let's see if we can mitigate that with special treatments now. It's actually done to basically determine your future treatments, not so much saying, hey, avoid the glyphosate, which in this case they're implying even on an organic level may be very difficult to do. But to proceed, in subsequent generations, prostate kidney disease as well as obesity and occurring multiple diseases at once. In fact, by the third and fourth generation, rats whose predecessors have been exposed to the chemical were middle-aged. 90% had one or more of these health problems, a dramatically higher rate than the control group. Also, too, they allude to, in reference to the research, is with our obesity epidemic and other diseases and less healthy years that people are living, even though they may be living longer, not as healthy. Maybe, maybe not. You see where I'm going with this. Again, I don't want to add publisher bias and publisher bias for those not familiar is my own hypothesis in reference to the research. I want to stick with the outcome. It is alluded to, basically in the full study itself, that may be part of the obesity epidemic, is not 
so much necessarily because of dietary preferences, unless a dietary prefer preference includes glyphosate. You get where I'm going. Now I'm going to go to the full study. I'm going to read part of the discussion to give you a better, uh, uh, better perspective of what they're saying from a technical aspect, and then we'll go to the conclusion. But to proceed, a previous study by our laboratory, quoting a course, demonstrated the ability of one of the most commonly used agricultural herbicides, glyphosate, to promote the epigenetic transgenerational inheritance of pathology. Negligible pathology was observed in F0, target group 1, consumes the glyphosate. F1 generations from direct exposure, but a significant increase in pathology and disease was observed in the grand offspring, F2 generation, and great grand offspring, F3. This is termed generational toxicology and appears to develop through the epigenetic transgenerational inheritance of germline epimutation alterations that include imprinted like gene characteristics and are transmitted to subsequent generations. The current study used groups of individuals with a single pathology to identify potential epigenetic biomarkers for disease. The pathologies observed with sufficient numbers of animals included prostate disease, kidney disease, obesity, and multiple diseases with individuals of greater than or equal to two different pathologies. These are relevant pathologies for humans in the prostate disease, one of the most prominent pathologies in human males. Prostate disease impacts 50% of those males over the age of 50, and 100%, that's a pretty big number, of males over the age of 70 in the USA. I don't like using absolutes. Kidney disease is also a prominent disease in aging population. Obesity is dramatically increasing. Here's where they're alluding to the potential connection. In the population, both males and females, with greater than 30% of the males in the USA and Europe. Now I'm going to go back to the public release to conclude. Ultimately, the goal will be able to produce diagnostic tests for humans. But replicating the studies in humans will be challenging simply because glyphosate is so ubiquitous in our diet, quoting Skinner. So that's where we're going with that as far as what we're looking at. So glyphosate. Very, very prominent in our particular society, in our particular culture. The damage, according to the uh, researchers they're alluding to, may already be done for a large section of our society. So, instead of trying to cry over spilt milk, the researchers are implying, hey, glyphosate's out there, the damage is done. We can basically reduce our exposure to glyphosate, but we have to count on the individuals that have been exposed, Let's look at the biomarkers that lead the propensity for certain diseases in future generations, whether it be kidney, obesity, prostate, whatever. And let's see if we can start mitigating for the damaging effects of the glyphosate exposure from our prior parents, prior parents, parents, or great grandparents, or, gra or grandparents. Four generations, your great grandchildren, they get down the road, well, you're going to be a great ancestor and your great-grandchildren may be paying the results or the price for our consumption of this particular herbicide glyphosate. DUI citation will be there so you can follow the study and read it on your own. Again an animal model basically the lead researcher expressed the reason why they use animal models as opposed to humans and that's because finding a control group is very difficult but just the same an argument for eating cleaner, less herbicides, less pesticides? Yes, probably without a doubt, looking at this animal model. Again, that's for your conclusion to be made. I hope you find this information of use. Gratitude, thank you. And of course, as always, if you wanna come visit on Saturday or Sunday night the channel, that's when we do our data analytics in reference to the current pandemic at hand. So you can get the data from a different aspect or a different look if you're into biostatistics and stuff like that, which can give you a better understanding of what's really going on as opposed to just looking at a chart with cumulative numbers. Uh, but again, gratitude. Thank you as always. Thank you for watching. Hope you find this information of use as always. I look forward to seeing you all once again next week. I'll sign you off. Thanks again. Bye.